Hello and welcome to Tech of the Month in association with Garmin. This is the show where we bring you the last four weeks in tech news and reviews. This month we're really excited to announce a competition partnership with Garmin where we'll be giving away a Garmin Edge 830 cycling computer every month in Tech of the Month. So make sure to stay tuned to find out how you can win. On to our first topic. Quite recently, I published an article about integration of cables and also proprietary seat posts alongside that. And it generated quite a lot of interest, a lot of comments, so we're really keen to hear what our YouTube audience thinks as well. Now, the competition for improved aerodynamics in the last couple of years has meant a race for greater integration. Where typically, in the past, when we talked about integrated cables, we meant those that disappeared into the down tube. However, now we mean integrated cables that are completely hidden from view. Now, usually these run through the handlebars and into the head tube uh, and it does make maintenance life quite a lot more difficult. I spoke to a mechanic at a local bike shop and he said recently a headset service where a rider had been on the turbo all winter cost that rider £300 and it was three hours in labour and some of these bikes take six hours to build. Now yes you could do this yourself at home you could learn how to do it but if it's taking a professional mechanic a very experienced professional mechanic three hours um, I think it's going to take you longer it's certainly take me longer for sure um, and it's just interesting you know I wonder if do we want this do we want our cables completely hidden it's going to make our lives more difficult it is going to be more expensive but it, it is arguably faster. I mean, Merida, when they introduced their most recent aero bike, they said it was a two watt saving per cable. It all adds up. And Cervelo told me that between the Cervelo S5, which is its very much spaceship-esque aero version, versus the C5, you've got around a 55 watt saving at 50k an hour, which is quite fast, but that will add up to actually more time uh, if a rider is going slower. And of course, there is the fact that these parts cost more. So the Cervelo's V-Stem costs £267. Uh, and then the accompanying bars are £356. And the seat post we found for £140. So you have got a more expensive system, takes much longer to work on, it's more expensive to maintain, but it is potentially, well, it is faster. Um, so let us know in the comments, do you want total integration or do you not? Because the brands are supplying they say what customers demand. So is this what you demand? We'd really like to know. Just when we thought everything was going to be about tubeless, Tubo Lito have released a new fancy inner tube. The Pieson's inner tube, which is for mountain biking and gravel. Yes, you can laugh at the name. I did when I first read it. Retails at £41.99p and is capable of giving you real-time pressure readings from your tire using an NFC chip. Now, Tubolito say that the NFC chip is protected from impacts and pinch flats, but is it a marginal gain too far? Let us know in the comment section below. We'd really like to hear your thoughts on it. Now, not to be outdone, Pirelli has also moved into the super light inner tube market with its own smart tube that weighs 70% less than a standard butyl inner tube and costs £35. So to give you a hint at some of the content coming from the tech team in the coming weeks, we are currently testing four £1,000 bikes. And that is a really popular price point. We know that an awful lot of people are looking for a bike around that price. One of the key differences between these bikes has been the braking style. So one of them is rim brake and the other three are cable actuated discs, but they're all using different systems and specifically different brake pads actually is something that we've discussed quite a lot. Uh, we've done some brake tests outside and the results should be on the screen now. So we ran that with a rider getting up to 30k an hour, slamming on the brakes, and then we measured where they stopped from the center of the front axle. And I mean, I think the results make for pretty interesting reading. I mean, there are many other factors that make for a good bike and we will discuss all of those in the full group test, but we thought you might like to see those results ahead of time. Entrepreneurial British engineers New Motion Lab have shown off a new radical sprocket design, which they say reduces wear, increases efficiency, and crucially can be used with a standard roller chain. The design that they're calling the Enduo Evolve is a wider tooth profile and features half the number of teeth of a standard sprocket. Now, New Motion Labs say that most of the losses in a drivetrain are found within the pins and the rollers of the chain. And they say that their wider teeth profile will help facilitate better engagement and therefore increase efficiency. 
They plan to license out this technology rather than manufacture it themselves. And they say that they've already signed agreements to showcase this technology at the upcoming Tokyo Olympics on the track. So we can't wait to see it in use. Now, with more cyclists getting out on the road and the fact that it is summer, we've been ramping up our short reviews and here are some of our highlights. The POC Aero VPD come in at £270. Now, we found these to be comfortable shorts with a lovely supportive and compressive feel, as well as a chamois that provided comfort on long rides. But they weren't quite perfect, with a bulky front portion of the chamois that was distracting during harder efforts and silicone grippers in the bib straps that didn't add much benefit but they did make the shorts more of a faff to put on. These aren't fatal flaws, however, but at 270 pounds, and with there being so many cheaper shorts available, it's hard to recommend the POC Aero VPD shorts against the competition. These got three and a half stars out of five. Now the Lusso DRS shorts are more reasonably priced than the POCs coming in at 125 pounds, and they are comfortable, lightweight, and well-designed and well-made. The textured fabric may or may not save you a few watts, but the very competitive price compared to the big branded shorts will definitely save you a few quid. These scored four and a half stars out of five. So next up, we had the women's ASOS T La 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 S7 women's bib shorts. These aren't new in the range, they've been around for quite some time, but they do offer excellent comfort in the saddle. The leg grippers don't dig in and they make comfort brakes easy too with the central clasp. They're not cheap, but I would genuinely expect them to last at least twice as long as many more moderately priced pairs on the market based on previous experience with ASOS. So these got a very rare five out of five for me. We also tested the Rafa Classic bib shorts and these come both in a men's and women's fit. I kind of thought that the women's model looked like it took its styling from Victorian bathing costumes, but performance wise, they were great. The pad is really comfortable. They were a bit let down by the gripper. This has been redesigned for this iteration and it's very thick, a bit like a tire with an awful lot of tread. However, with a bit of shuffling around, I got them to fit eventually. They just don't conform like a standard gripper. These got a four out of five. Now, as promised, we are giving away a Garmin Edge 830 in this month's Tech of the Month. Worth 350 pounds, this is one of the flagship computers from the brand, featuring turn-by-turn -turn navigation and the ability to recalculate your course, a market-leading touchscreen, as well as performance metrics that can make you fitter and faster. Now, to enter to win this computer, please go down to the description below and click on the link and fill in the form there you'll be automatically entered to the prize draw, which will be conducted at random. The competition will run for three weeks from the publication of this video. And if you are unfortunate enough to not win, don't worry, because we'll be doing it again next month. Good luck. So on to a look at some of the products that the tech team is testing at the moment. Now, first up, I have a very interesting pedal design from some guys called Pitbull Pedal. As you can see, you've got a 360 degree point of engagement. You can clip in anywhere on this pedal. So you just clip into the, the, the metal, basically. Precis well, yeah, so the cleat has a spring on it and you place your foot on there and it just clips in. It's like immediate. It kind of feels like a magnet hitting a magnet. You clip, you put your foot down and it's engaged and away you go. And just to disengage, you just twist your ankle out exactly like you would any other pedal. So these guys, actually, they launched a Kickstarter back in, I believe, 2017. They actually cancelled that Kickstarter and now they're back. This is the KOM version, which means it weighs 92 grams, which is lighter than the standard model. Uh, and yeah, I mean, they certainly, they look interesting. They, they do stick quite far out from the bike. And I would, I would worry a little bit about turning up to road races or especially track races. I was going to put them on to go to track and I decided against it. Now, out of curiosity about how wide it is, I was trying to picture hmm, what would that be like with a normal pedal. So I actually have gone and fetched some pedals. This is a standard look Kio pedal. And if we line it up, so the spindle is in the same place, it's maybe a centimeter wider than the look Kio pedal. Um, and this Garmin, uh, this Garmin power pedal here is again, it's probably a little bit more than a centimeter, maybe two centimeters wider. So it is wider. Um, my suspicions were correct, but also it does have a design that kind of uh, it exaggerates its wits a little bit, I would say. It is just looks that bit intimidating. It's, a, it's 
the single metal bar and then it has a steel flange at this end and then you've got your contact point which uses an 8mm allen key to fit. The cleats are really easy to fit, you've just got um, three screws and then you've also got the spring that needs to be screwed in as well. And, and then tension is adjusted by loosening or tightening that central metal spring as well which is quite easy and it's a neat idea. You can also just float but that is by changing to a different cleat um, a bit like you have with Wahoo Speedplay system. What is quite interesting about the cleat is that it does have a flat surface, so you can actually walk around at coffee stops almost completely um, unrestricted. So it's not like walking around on a Shimano or Look cleat, which does as well have a benefit, a bit like a mountain bike SPD pedal. Um, but you, you have got this metal bar. So what do you think? I mean, there have been systems like this in the past, it's, it's not the first, um, and it certainly does allow you to clip in quicker, which could take out some of the nervousness for some people and could make the start of crit races just that little bit less anxiety-ridden. So this month I brought along Garnier's G. STL road shoes, which were released earlier this year and are the Italian brand's top tier offering. Perhaps not quite as prominent and definitely harder to pronounce than other shoe brands such as CD or Bond, but Garnier's G. STL shoes are still aiming at the very pinnacle in performance, which is what you'd hope from a set of shoes with an RRP, which is just below £380. And to put that in context, that's £5 more expensive than the specialised Aerie shoes that's worn by Sam Bennett, Julian Alphilippe and many others within the Pro Peloton. So let's first run through a few of the details of the construction and then get on to how they feel to ride. Starting with the soles, we're rated 12 out of 12 on Guyanese arbitrary scale, so at least you know that you're getting the maximum stiffness that the brand will offer. There's a few little cutout vents around the forefoot and the heel block is replaceable, although the rubber bumper on the front is not. Although mostly covered up by the cleat now, there are the usual markings you'd expect to see on the sole for fine tuning your position. And the cleat nuts themselves have 9mm of fore aft adjustment, so if you like your cleats in a fairly extreme position, then you're well catered for. The upper has lots of little perforations to increase the breathability, but you'd still expect it to be a bit warmer than a shoe that has uh, lots of mesh panels and cutaway sections, but on the other hand, a construction like this is a lot easier to wipe clean if you've been riding through the muck. The heel cup is rigid and has quite an extreme shaping to it to really lock you in place and really minimise any lifting of a heel. On the inside, the fabric is a bit like a cat's tongue, it's grippy in one direction but smooth in the other, with the intention being to make it easy to slip into the shoes, but again minimising any heel lift. The binding system utilises the Boa Li2 dials, which allow you to tighten and loosen in millimetre increments, which makes it quite easy to get the binding pressure pretty much spot on. I've been riding these shoes for a little while now and they've made a pretty good impression. These aren't the lightest shoes, weighing in at 592 grams for the pair, they're 28 grams heavier than the specialised Aries in the same size. The simple outer construction really has proved a lot easier to keep clean than a design which utilises a lot of mesh panels. And in sticking with a traditional tongue rather than an integrated liner, they're quick and easy to put on, unlike the specialised Aries which do require a degree of cajoling. When it comes to the stiffness of the sole, for me there's no detectable flex. But then, I am very far off hitting 2000 watts in a sprint, so if you're around those levels you might come away with something different. My feet are a little on the wide side, but quite low volume, so if some shoes I can find it quite difficult to get it tight enough that my foot isn't flopping about in a vertical plane, while well, still not having it be too tight and getting crushed at the sides. But as I say, with these it's pretty much spot on. There's still a little bit of pinching at the sides when cranked all the way down, but that's fine for rides up to 2 hours long. And on rides longer than that, there do generally tend to be quieter moments when you can back off the tension on the bow dials a little bit and give your feet a bit more breathing space before cranking them up again for those points when you need to put in a bit more of an effort. Obviously these shoes are very expensive and as with these things, twice the price rarely means twice as light, twice as durable or twice as fast. But they do stack up quite well against shoes of a similar price from other brands, particularly for day-to-day -day practicalities and so credit where it's due. For more details on the Guy and AG STL shoes, my full review is going to be coming out on the Cycling Weekly website soon, so watch out for that! Bike of the month this month is this, the Tofosi Cavazzo e-car, which is as the name suggests, running Campagnolo e-car gravel group set. Now this is exciting for multiple reasons, not least because of the £3,000 price tag, which is really competitive for a gravel bike with this group set, but also because it's the first time Cycling Weekly has been able to test ride the e-car group set. So we're really looking forward to getting to grips with this. 
Now this forms part of an upcoming gravel bike group test that we'll be making a video for, which is being conducted by Stefan, our tech writer. So unfortunately, it's a couple sizes too small for me. Uh, I'm actually really excited about that group test because there's some absolutely amazing bikes in there, including the new Canyon Grizzle. So do keep your eye out for that. That will be coming in the next couple of months. And there have been a lot of gravel releases this year, which does mean there's actually stock, which as, as we know, supply, demand, pandemic, Brexit, there, there's stock limitations across the market. So great to see some new gravel options coming available. Absolutely, it's really exciting. But back to this bike. Tifosi are calling it a go anywhere frame. Now it's a full carbon frame. It's made of a mixture of Torre T5000 and T7000 carbon fiber. And it's really approaching that sort of rugged, as they say, go anywhere end of the gravel spectrum. So it has really wide tire clearances. This bike can accommodate 50 millimeter tires as standard. That's 45 millimeter if you decide to run mug guards. And it can also run 650B wheels up to a 2.1 inch tire. So it's on paper a pretty versatile bike. There is a total plethora of mounts on this bike. There are four different places you can mount bottle cages. There's one on the top tube, there's the standard two inside the triangle, and then there's the mud catcher on the downside of the down tube. You probably only use that if you're riding somewhere dry. But it also has mounts so you can run mud guards as well. And excitingly, it also has rack mounts. So if you didn't want to load up your bike bags, instead you use racks or panniers, you can put them on here as well. And it can have, it can accommodate a 15 kilogram load on the front and a 25 kilogram load on the rear. Great, and you've got some nice flared bars as well. It looks like a pretty decent angle you've got. It should give you some good stability on some of those descents. Yeah, I think so. And also it looks great with those Campagnolo hoods as well. Mm -hmm. This group set is absolutely gorgeous and I'm very jealous that Stefan gets to test it. It's, it's a beautiful piece of kit. One of the things I found really interesting about eCar was they changed the shape of that shifting button, which as you can see, it's, it's just a little bit longer, but easier to reach. You see that as a, a pretty good plus? Yeah, I think it was the fact that you're riding off road, um, you need to be able to reach it that bit quicker and that bit easier. And actually, if you look at a road Campagnola group set, the fun paddle is pretty small. And this is pretty big and it just lets you catch it in an emergency if you suddenly the trail starts pointing uphill really quickly, but it still retains that classic sort of multiple shift technology that Campag are really well known for, where you can just like dunk gears by just pushing the fun paddle all the way through. It's an incredibly satisfying way to ride a bike and their group sets make this really nice, very mechanical, very sort of resonant clunking noise when you move through the gears. And all of that is retained in this new group set. Mm. And being able to dump a few gears actually is probably much more useful off-road because you do get those really sudden changes in incline. Yeah, you do. And I think you do work a group set much harder off-road and you do really push through the gears much quicker. But what is interesting about this Campag group set is it has retained some of the features that they used on their 12-speed road group set. So this is a 13-speed group set. They've only gone up to 12 on the road. But as far as they can, or at least for the first sort of five or six gears, there's just one tooth jumps on this cassette, which is why it has that sort of explosion. It's like you, an exploded diagram almost. It's very narrow and then it just suddenly goes very wide. So you're sort of getting a, I've got it in my notes here. You get a nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14 are all single spaced jumps. So that's be really useful if you have to ride on the road until you get to the trails, because you can just sort of tap out pretty quickly and just change your gear a little bit. And then when you're on the road, the jumps get bigger, much bigger. In some cases, you've got a five or six tooth jump, but that does give you that spread. Mm -hmm. And it's unlikely riding a road that it's suddenly gonna rear up in front of you and you're gonna need to dunk through the gears, whereas that is gonna happen on the trail. And that's why they've given you that much bigger spread of gears. Now, one of the big selling points of the Cavazzo is the price. It's £3,000 for a bike equipped, for a full carbon frame bike equipped with a e-car group set. Now, e-car alone retails at £1,449. So it's a pretty decent value bike. It's running these Miche wheels, which 
I've not tested, so I can't attest to you know how well they roll, but I can tell you that they're aluminium and they're tubeless ready, although they come set up as clincher on this bike. So again, to attest to the value of the bike, we'll really have to test it all and see how those wheels roll. But on paper, it's looking like a really smart value option. The Specialized Diverge, which eCar launched on famously at the time of the launch, that costs £7,250. So it will be interesting to see the ride quality compared to the Diverge to see what type of value you're getting. But like I said, stay tuned for all of that and more in our upcoming gravel group test. Now, finally, it's weight. This bike weighed 8.2 kilos and this is a size 54. So that's pretty competitive for a gravel bike, I think, with the wider tires. It is running a one by group set, which will have saved a bit of weight. And, you know, it's a carbon fiber chain ring. So I would say that's quite a competitive weight. Absolutely, it's 1,000 pounds more expensive than last month's gravel bike, but it's also two kilos lighter. So it gives you an idea what you're getting for your cost. I hope you enjoyed June's tech of the month. If you did, please do hit the like button, drop us a comment, and don't forget to enter the Garmin competition. If you wanna see more of our videos, hit the bell to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.